Hello and welcome to Gaming Centralization. So today, I figured it's the day after the event. Uh, we went to 11th place. My team took Night Rose, Prism, and Gurgit. So I figured I would go over the 11th place uh, Night Rose deck list, kind of show off some things. I personally went four and two. My team overall went four and two. Uh, we just barely did not make the top eight cut. Um, a couple of the two teams that were ahead of us um, were four and two. Like there were like three or four teams ahead of us who were four and two. So we just barely didn't make it. Right, like uh, if I went up, I think if one or two of our opponents had had a slightly better score, we might have made it to top eight. Uh, but they didn't. So here we are. We're recording the eleventh place uh, vampire princess of night fog night rose decklist. So kind of just kicking off into it, we have got four vampire princess of night fog night rose. Uh, if you do not know, her skill is when a Rear guard attacks or boosts. You may have you can have that unit get five thousand power. And if it does at the end of the battle, you retire that unit. Uh, this is fine because the main combo for the deck, you a lot of your rear guards are going to retire themselves, and you bring things out a lot anyways. So this retire really is actually more beneficial than hurtful in the long run. Uh, so uh, the other uh, skill is on attack. You can counter blast one and call up to two cards from your drops under rear guard, but they have to be in the same column. Then if your opponent's Vanguard is greater through a greater, this unit gets uh, plus 10k power until the end of the battle. So you, you are going to go into two big attackers, or you're gonna call one attacker and then something behind it. And I'll get into the combo there, but it's important to see these pieces, but you can kind of search out most of them. Um, I went so early one time in the tournament that I actually, like a person was on grade two and I beat them while they were on grade two. Like, I got, they did not get a chance to ride to grade three. I rushed that hard with this deck. So you can push for a lot of damage. You have to do it to set up. And it actually has a pretty decent draw engine built into it that you um, definitely want to take advantage of. So definitely four of the night rose is kind of necessary you need to be on her you need to ride her which there are plenty of ways to search her out uh we'll get into later your main game ender uh attacker is dragon undead skull dragon so this card cannot be normal card from the hand so you can't call it from your hand so if you draw it you need to discard it in some way either with a pg or with another effect uh but during your turn it gets two thousand power for each card in your drop zone so i think with a 10k trigger, the highest I have had this card attacking was like 79k yesterday. Um, and you know, that's just that's pretty good. Uh, but at the end of the battle, that attack it also retires itself. So, you know, you get the 5k off of Night Rose, so it's 79k with the 5k from Night Rose and with the trigger, so it was like 64 beforehand. Uh, it's just all around, it's good, and your opponent typically isn't going to be able to deal with like if I let's say get this out a uh turn or like at the beginning of the turn i ha i get one of these out somehow and i can swing for the you know 62 let's say it is then i retire it then i attack or attack something else then i attack the 62 then i use night rosa skill and and pop off combo 79k attacker or 74 and then 67 and then a 79k attack is pretty good uh but night rose calls to two different columns so how do you get to the point where you can call out a second skull dragon a second column so that you have these two big attackers and that's where you take advantage of ghosty leader beatrice now i got stuck riding her one of the games and it definitely feels very underpowered but it gave me more defensive options and allowed me to live through uh being attacked like i i it allowed me to live through being attacked until i drew into my night rose to go into my combo and luckily I had another Beatrice in the drop zone, so I was able to use Beatrice to solve the Beatrice and just be fine. Also, farming up protect markers is nice. But Beatrice's skill is Vanguard or Rearguard when placed. Soul Blast one to call a card not named Beatrice, so you can't call her from the drop zone to rearguard. So that's why you only play two, is you can only really take advantage of the uh the one. Uh then on Vanguard skill, all of your units with ghost unit card name on your rear guard or guard circle get intercepted 5k power and uh 5k shield. So they're pretty decent. 
Um, and we are guard and now the thing that kind of helped didn't really pop up in this match because uh, you really only have a grade one ghosty that's going to be attacking, which kind of hurts. Well, there's a grade two ghosty as well. You can call it the grade one, but it's a one of, so we'll get into that later. But uh, when you regard to retire by a card's ability during your turn, you can kind of watch one and call it ghosty with a grade one less than the card retired. So um, it's not bad, but it's definitely, definitely not what you want to be riding on. You use it with the Night Rose skill, you will call it Beatrice. Then call a Skull Dragon, then you'll Soul Blast with the Beatrice to call another Skull Dragon. That way you are hitting your big numbers consistently. Uh, if you're short on cards in hand and you are not going to be ending the game, there's another card you will go into and we'll get into that later. Uh, so next up, we have moving into the Grade 2s for Greed Shade. Uh, Greed Shade is not a very good card to ride on the Vanguard Circle. Uh, Vanguard Rearguard, if your drop zone has 10 or more cards, you it gets 5k, so it's a 14k attacker. If it's on Rearguard, while you're on Night Rose, it is also a 19k attacker. So that means that you're hitting numbers that require your opponent to start guarding for more cards. Like, you can't just be quick shielded, you can actually hit decent numbers with this. Uh, next, also has a Rearguard skill. On place, discard a card from your hand, mill two cards off of your deck, and then add one not named greed shade back to your hand so i call this you can discard anything you can discard your skull dragons in your hand another card that you can't be called to rear guard i'll go over here in a second and then you mill two and then you can add things like i added pgs back to my hand i added a heal guard at one point because my opponent was gonna be on grade three next turn and i was like all right now we're just gonna add another heal guard that way i had two and i could have lived through their turn a little bit better so uh you you have definite good options to uh do with this for sure uh, next up, you ha I have four Columbard. Columbard is one of your main pieces for getting things. This is what you want to be riding to um, every single time. You, you want to ride to this as much as you can. It, it's going to set you up in perfectly. So you Catawast one. I'm going to place on Vanguard or Rearguard Circle. Search your deck for one card. Put it to the drop zone. Discard it. Then you can call one card to Rearguard. Now, you, keep in mind... You can only use his skill once a turn, like hard once a turn. Like you cannot call one, use it, and then call another one and use it. So you can only use the one. Uh, but this will get you uh, another grade two that will allow you to draw a card. I'll go over that here in a minute. But it also, like, if I'm behind and my opponent's not, like, dealing me a lot of damage, I only got one damage, and the cross would just going to attack my rear guards. There is uh, a card I'll go over here in a second. It's a one of that I play. Oh, like if I have Columbard in hand on my grade three turn, I might call Columbard, go for Jesse the Ghosty. Well, t I'll tell you in a second. Second, you'll go into Jesse the Ghosty. That way, you have two decent attackers, and oh, uh, then you can go for the Night Rose attack and hopefully go for the Skull Dragon so that you can end the game. Um, then you have Jesse. So Jesse the Ghosty himself has a drop zone skill, which from the drop zone retire two rear guards not named Jesse the Ghosty. Uh, and call it rear guard, and you can only use it to hard once per turn as well. So, like, you know, once one, one of it in the drop zone is fine. It's kind of a situational thing. If you really need to get rid of it, just get rid of it. Um, I, I definitely would encourage playing one of this. I saw one person also playing Night Rose, and they told me they weren't playing this. I said I definitely recommended to them to play this. It is, uh, it will solve your counter blast problems. You can do some combos with Columbard with it. It is actually, it, it helps out a lot. Uh, I did have it pop up once that entire day, once the entire day, and I feel like that, out of six rounds, if it pops up at least once, I feel like it's still a good thing to have. Uh, then also, on when it attacks, it gains 5,000 power in front of battle. At the end of the battle, retire it. If you have not countercharged due to a Jesse to go see this turn, countercharge one. So again, with the Night Rose, 19k attacker, and you get to countercharge one, so the Column Bard, it really helps. Uh, next, the main thing you kind of go to until you're going into your Skull Dragons is... Uh, Stormlight Ghost Ship. This card from the hand can also cannot be normal called, so you can't guard with it. You can't call it to rear guard. You can ride it because it's not a call, so that's a different mechanic. So you can ride it if you get stuck with it. So it's not uh, terrible, but you do only want to play like two of it. Um, I would definitely consider playing three, but two two seems like a good number. Um, I did have one situation where I kind of wish I had a third one because uh, one was in the damage zone, one was in the drop zone, and I kind of wanted to call two of them out with, like, the Beatrice, call these two, and get more cards in hand. But it was fine, because I went with Skull Dragon and pushed for more power. I think I lost that game, but not by, like, it was it was a really close game. 
Um, but also when it attacks, it gains 15k until under turn. At the end of the battle, draw a card and retire this unit. So it doesn't care if it, if the Night Rose retires it. Also another target with the Column Bard. So like I can go Column Bard, Counter Blast 1, call out Ghost Ship, swing for the 29 with the Ghost Ship, retire it, draw a card. Uh, then like Night Rose, call Ghost Ship, Beatrice, call Ghost Ship. And just like draw three cards off of that on top of your Twin Drive. That's five cards in hand uh, on top of the fact that you just had three 29k attackers which is actually pretty nutty um about that that's you know you can hit pretty decent numbers even without those skull dragons uh next up we got four tommy the ghosty brothers uh just simple top five grade three searcher but it is also a 13k attacker if you have uh five or more cards in your drop zone so this on night rose turns is going to definitely be like 18k attackers uh pretty decently so you're requiring 10k guards out of your opponents again uh, or 5k guards early on as well as being able to search the top five and find my beatrices and skull dragons or if i've already got like a skull dragon or beatrice on my hand i can find my night rose and then i can discard either the skull dragon the beatrice or even the storm right ghost ships if i have my grade two in hand so for that reason tommy is definitely a four of it helps you search the deck efficiently and has a decent power um sea storm banshee another four of in this deck uh like a hard four of just because when it play and this is what you typically want to ride on top of like you'll call tommy to the rear guard and use a skill but you want see strolling banshee uh for sure when placed on vanguard circle search your deck for one card and discard it so i can search for my stronger ghost ships i can search for my skull dragons typically you're going to want to search out your storm right ghost ships disc discard it that way you can go into column bard and your column bard is either going to search out your second storm right ghost ship or your Beatrice. Uh, the Skull Dragons are your game enders, so you, you can like counter blast those first if they go to damage zone and then heal them later on. Uh, you can definitely search them out later on. Like, let's say I already searched out my two Stormer Ghost Ships, so I've already got my Beatrice in my drop zone. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call a Column Bard, I'm gonna counter blast one. I'm either gonna get the Jesse the Ghosty, or I can grab the Skull Dragon and then call out the Stormer Ghost Ship, or call out the Jesse the Ghosty if he's already in the drop zone. Like, if I've got Jesse and the Ghosty in the hand, I'll guard with that as a 5k. Uh, just to guard with it uh then also another skill of hers that helps power up the skull dragons uh is on rear guard circle at the end of the battle that it attack or boost in so 13k attacker with night rose mind you still so still decently to attack with her still requiring a 5k guard in some situations um you can mill two cards off the top of your deck and if you disc if one of those cards is a trigger unit you can retire her and draw a card so <clears throat> she'll retire herself and draw you a card so it's even more draw so like I think I drew upward of like six or seven cards in one turn through all of these combos. Just call, call and bard, counter blast, storm right ghost ship, swing with these two, swing with uh, retire, drew a card off of this, draw a card off of the storm right ghost ship, that's two. Then swing with night rose, calling storm right ghost ship, Beatrice, storm right ghost ship, then night rose, twin drive, two cards. So that puts me at four, then five and six. I actually uh, hit a draw trigger on my drive check, so that was seven cards to hand in one turn and all it costed me was like two counter blasts and a soul blast like that's actually not bad that is nutty for the fact that, that is as many attacks as that it is five attacks at the power that they're at that is pretty nutty uh next i went to uh, i chose only three necromone honestly this card didn't pop up at all uh, so I would not say you absolutely need to play this. I would maybe even encourage play more of the like skeleton ski sea navigator, which we're into a second. Uh, but for the drop zone, actually, that, I forget it did pop up once, but it was like an optional thing that I just chose to do. Um, and it it's kind of weird. I had ten in my drop zone, and then when I paid the cost, I didn't have ten anymore. So we kind of just decided that the um it checks after the cost of the skill because like they were playing Genesis. Uh, also, if you recognize the bat, and you probably played against me at Houston, or you played against my team at Houston, hey, thank you for the matches. It was a wonderful experience. I absolutely loved being at my first Spring Fest, and I cannot wait to go to another one or participate in another big event, because it was absolutely a blast. I almost forgot to say that at the beginning of the video, but... Uh, Negrobone, draw zone, discard a card from your hand, put this card to the bottom of the deck, and call a grade one or uh, grade one card from your drop zone rear guard. If your drop zone has ten or more cards, uh, you can call any grade instead. So you can use this skill. Like if you don't have column bard or you don't have certain things and you need to start pushing for numbers, 
You can use the bone and you can discard a card, pop this to the bottom of the deck and call out like a Stormlight Ghost Ship. Because again, 29k attacker that's going to draw you a card. It's actually not that bad. Let me just get that without the white player on it. So like actually not that bad. Uh, then I have two one-ups in the deck, which is one Skeleton Sea Navigator. Um, this didn't pop up at all. And I, it was actually kind of sad. I ended up being against a force deck. So like 13k Vanguard. I had to call the Skeleton Sea Navigator to try to attack. Uh, it was a 12, it was only a 12k with a Night Rose skill, so I hit the rear, I tried to just, I hit the Interceptor. Uh, I, I was losing that game anyways. There was like a, the other card is Ripple Banshee. Uh, Ripple Banshee did pop up once, but it's not gonna be like, if you're missing your Beatrices, you can call this behind, like, your Skull Dragon or your, uh, other things. It's on place from drop zone, Soul Blast 1 draw a card and gains 4k, so just more draw. Uh, making up for the fact that like you can't call another storm I ghost ship with Beatrice. So it was situational. It popped up I think one time, but it wasn't uh too too big of a deal. So of course, uh that's the main that's all the cards in the deck. And then we just got the trigger cards, which is uh four heal guards, uh absolutely insane. You need those. Also 10k card 10k columns to card. Uh in this deck that doesn't matter, but I did see one person actually like it really helped them out the fact that it was 10 power. Uh four crit with the Mortal Mimic, four more crit with the Rough Seeds Vanshee, so a total of 10 crit because we do run uh, the two Sentinel crits. This is fine because you are generating Protect Markers. I actually at one time had a P, had a draw PG and two Protect Markers in the hand. So you generate Protect Markers. It is not a problem to play these. That way you don't have to discard cards and it's just more crit, more pressure. I had one person, I, would, I swung with the Night Rose. They were at five damage. They guarded the Night Rose. Uh, they were at four damage. They guarded the Night Rose. Uh, first check crit, second check crit. Both of my uh, Skull Dragons got a crit trigger, so they were hitting for like 84. One was 82, one was 84 uh, with two crit each. There was no guarding that. They were playing four, so they didn't have uh, extra PGs in hand, so it hurt them more than it uh, than anything. Like I want to build this deck myself. This is my buddy's deck, so... Join my Discord and, you know, uh, let me know if you've got some of these cards and you're willing to get rid of them for cheaper than what they typically sell for or trade for. So, because uh, I need some help building and I'm kind of broke now after the trip to Houston being a 12-hour drive away. Uh, so, lastly, the deck is just two draw triggers and then the starter. Grenache is one of my favorite ones. I actually prefer a uh, different Grand Blue starter, but we didn't have it on us at the time, so that was that. But, uh, yeah, that's that's all of that, that's night rose that's a pretty standard night rose list that's the way that i played it uh we're going forward to really hurt um i did have one game where i just the odds were stacked against me i was playing against bermuda triangle if i had one i don't think it would have made a difference if i had won that game uh it actually might have made a difference if i won that game um i may see about later on trying to borrow both of my buddies decks and see if we can do if you want to see a prism deck and a gurguit deck which i mean they're both pretty standard decks uh that you see a lot of if you want to see those let me know uh that we can see the lists that we ran that took us to 11th place because uh for two of us it was our first event um in person like big event uh for vanguard so um i feel like we did pretty good of course there were some harsh feelings that we didn't do better um and of course i did pick up more things like i picked up all the things for mlb i'm going to be uh tweaking that deck i'm making that deck list i picked up all the things for eva i'm going to be tweaking that deck list i hopefully soon will be able to play build the deep police deck so i can do a quick deck list on that before next clan collection comes out because i did pick up my twin orders finally um but yeah, eva phantom blaster overlord and magic sword blaster i picked up the stuff for all three of those decks um but yeah if you want to see the other two 11th place uh bsf houston deck list let me know in the comments down below if you want to see me review the deck list that topped at houston and maybe if i played against those people uh also let me know down in the comments but uh for now if you like the video like subscribe for more because i hope to be uploading more content also hopefully later on the week we hope be uploading the vlog video which kind of didn't go as well as i wanted to but i will talk about that in that video so uh, i'll catch you all next time